GRMC neurosurgeon Dr. David Weingarten recently performed a stereotactic biopsy to determine the nature of an unknown growth on a patient's brain. He came into the hospital essentially because he couldn't walk anymore and uh, he had been getting progressively weaker uh, over approximately a month um, and upon further investigation his, his family said that they thought that he had actually been having some personality changes uh, for possibly upwards of two months. So they had, they had been noticing some changes in him but then he actually started getting weak on his left side. Um, and eventually got to the point where he really couldn't take care of himself and came into the hospital. Once he got a scan of his brain, they, they called me because he clearly had a, a large lesion on the right side of his brain um, that largely occupied the, the part of the brain that controls motor function, that is your ability to move. And so it was evident that that was what was causing his, his left-sided weakness. And so the next step is, the next step in treatment is to say, well, what is this? You know, how do we need to treat it? Is it an infection? Is it uh, an abscess, uh, bacterial or parasitic or otherwise? Uh, or is this a tumor? And if it is a tumor, is it the kind of tumor that responds to chemotherapy? Or is it the kind of tumor that responds to radiation? Or is it the kind of tumor that you simply have to cut out? So we chose to do a biopsy. And in terms of biopsies, you can either do them what we call open, meaning we take a large piece of the skull off and actually physically see the tumor with our own eyes, uh, meaning you have to penetrate a, a fair amount of brain tissue to get to it, or a stereotactic biopsy, which is what we ended up deciding to do. It was a first-of-its-kind operation that made use of two devices only available at GRMC, a stereotactic needle linked to a neuronavigation system. Uh, there has never been, to my knowledge, any stereotactic neuronavigation system on this island. Uh, it is an extremely expensive, very high-tech piece of equipment. The first thing we do is to register the scan to the patient's face. So the neuronavigation system is essentially like a GPS for the brain, but in order for the, the machine to know what we're pointing at, it has to compare the preoperative scan to the patient's facial features in the operating room. As you can see, the registration device has four reflective balls on it. And those four, four reflective balls are recognized by the camera attached to the machine. The camera can essentially calculate where the tip of the instrument is based on the position of those four balls in three-dimensional space. Uh, so when we trace the patient's face, with the tip of the probe, the machine can actually calculate where in space that is, and it creates a map of the patient's face. Once the face is registered to the scan and the computer makes a match, then when I point at something on the patient's face, the machine recognizes where that is in three-dimensional space and can compare it to the scan, show me what I'm pointing at. Anytime you're penetrating the brain, you could consider that in some sense invasive. However, this is what I would call a minimally invasive approach. So rather than opening up a large piece of the skull and uh, essentially digging through normal brain to get to the abnormal tissue, this allows us to create a very small incision, a very small hole in the skull, and to make minimal penetration of the brain with a very small needle. So the device that we use to actually take the specimen is called a stereotactic biopsy needle. The, the stereotactic biopsy needle, just like the probe that we use to trace the patient's face, has these reflective balls on it that are recognized by the camera and the machine can then calculate where the tip of the biopsy needle is so that even though we can't see it as it penetrates the patient's brain, the neuronavigation system can show us on the scans where the tip of the needle is. Once the neuronavigation system shows us that we've reached the mass, and that the tip of the needle is in an appropriate position, then we're ready to take a biopsy. Now, the needle itself has a window on it, and that window can open and close, and it has uh, a port onto which a syringe can be placed to apply suction. So once we've secured the needle in place so that it can't move, then we open the window to the needle. We aspirate or suck with the, the syringe so that tissue gets sucked into the window, 
and then we close the window. And essentially, whatever tissue is inside the needle at that point uh, is cut off. And so that provides us with a, a small, about a millimeter wide and four or five millimeter long cylinder of tissue, which we can then send to pathology. In this particular case, this lesion was largely cystic. That is, it was filled with fluid. Uh, it was a relatively large lesion, and it was putting quite a bit of pressure on the patient's brain. So in order to try to relieve some of the patient's symptoms, we used the biopsy needle to aspirate uh, some of the, the fluid out of the cyst to try and uh, shrink it, essentially like letting air out of a balloon. So after surgery, uh, you know, his symptoms are not 100% resolved, but he is definitely stronger in his left arm. The most important thing that we gained for this patient is getting him a diagnosis, and that helps to guide the next step in his therapy. Without a diagnosis, you don't know whether you're treating a tumor or an infection, and those have radically different treatments. So he now has a diagnosis. We have taken some of the pressure off of his brain, uh, as a temporizing measure, taking that pressure off of his brain has allowed him to get a bit stronger. And uh, most importantly, he now has a direction for the next step in his therapy.